What have we got over here? It's a brand new lens from Tequila. 11 to 18 millimeter f2.8. Oh my, what a large app you have, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But first, the sponsor of this video, Wirestock. Make money from your photos, video and vector files by uploading to Wirestock. They get distributed to all major marketplaces and it's free to sign up. Royalty rates are higher than usual and Wirestock takes just 15 cent only when it sells. Get started with the link below. So yeah, I've got the brand new Tequila 1118 out here while doing some steppy stones. Uh, yes, holding the phone while holding her out, while doing steppy stones. It's something to put on the Insta, isn't it? Look what I've done today. I did some steppy stones. I'm going to post some photos on Instagram to prove it. That is wide enough for selfie. 11 millimetres, equivalent to a um, something. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I'm trying to work out the equivalents in my head. Almost fell in there. Okay, so equivalent is uh, about 16 millimetres, all right. Thanks for watching, see you later. All right, so anyway, Tokina 11 to 18. Fascinating thing about this, if there are fascinating things about lenses, that this is f2.8 all the way throughout the range, unlike Sony's offerings, which only go to f4. For crop, that is. This is a crop sensor lens. There's a 16-35 f2.8 in full frame, which is an absolute wang of a lens. This one, nice and compact. Just a little bit longer, a bit heavier than the the standard offering. All right, it's more than a little bit heavier than a Sony 10 to 20 millimeter PZ, but it still feels incredibly light. So let's let's take some pickies. Let's take some pictures. Post it on the Instas. Well, looks like there are others out there for the gram too. Watch your step though. The 11 to 18 millimeter gives extra speed, but has a little less range than the Sony ultra wide zoom. Doesn't sound like much, but it certainly feels like a lot. Talking about a lot, Tokina put all the focal lengths around the zoom ring. Useful for those anal about having the exact focal length to the millimeter. Although they must have used all of the ink on that because the front of the lens has no writing on it at all. 67 millimeter filter thread, by the way. But whatever it says or doesn't say on the lens, the images you get from it speak for itself. Decently sharp in the center wide open with a bit of a drop off in the corner wide open. Comparing the Sony with the Tokina, both wide open, the Tokina isn't all that far behind, just a tad softer with the Tokina in the center. When the Tokina is at f4, it looks as good as a Sony, maybe a bit better. Well, that sounds pretty good as an all. It's not all good news. There are some bad bits like the flaring when you're shooting kind of in the direction of the sun. Like that. Although it must be said that the flaring is mostly visible when the point of light is in the frame. With the hood on and the light not in the frame, flaring shouldn't be a problem. But it's not just the flaring where it gets a little bit naughty with this lens. It's the ghosting. And there's plenty of it. Again, it's when the light is in the frame pointing straight at the lens, but the ghosting is so prominent that I can't not say anything about it, especially given that the Sony 10 to 20 mm PZ doesn't suffer from any ghosting under the same conditions. Still, it's not all aberrations are plenty. The distortion is quite alright even on the ultra wide end. There's barrel distortion, but to be expected for an ultra wide zoom. Much less noticeable at 14 mm and 18 mm looks sweet. So the lens I'm using to film this right now is a Sony 10 to 20 mm f4pz. But look, why don't we swap it over because I'm itching to try on this because I think this could be a good replacement for that. Okay, so here we are with the Tokina at 11 mm Not quite as wide as the Sony which goes to 10 and doesn't go quite as long. This goes to 20, that 18, but that goes all the way to f2.8. The Sony f4, which means you can use it for low light, but also it will give you a little bit shallower depth of field. Now, when you're using an APS-C size sensor camera, you might want that shallow depth of field because smaller sensor and an ultra wide and an F4, you'll get loads of depth of field. But if you want that big sensor look, then you have to use something like this. It doesn't sound like it should make too much difference, F2.8 and F4, but it really does. I mean, this is at 10 millimeters. We can make it slightly longer at 11, just to make it exactly the same. There we are. And that's the thing that is potentially oh so exciting about this lens is that it's an alternative to the Sony. It's priced kind of similar, well, it's actually cheaper than the Sony, but it's got a large aperture, which is nice. But sometimes when you use a third party lens, you realize that there are some slight issues that you wouldn't get with a first party lens. Stabilization is not really the issue. It's kind of similar to the Sony PZ lens with the in-body stabilization of the Sony. It's the focus. For some reason, when you pair a Tokina 
with a Sony body which you expect to focus quickly, it ends up being a Panasonic. You know, I would have my face slap bang in the middle of the frame yeah. and then nothing. That's not as quick as it. And then kind of focuses. I guess. Doesn't cut it, does it? Well, I'd put a product right in front of my face. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then so it focuses and then it's not in focus. Shame. The Tokina 11 to 18 mm sounds good, it is good, but not perfect with everything. In its favour, it offers the large aperture the Sony can't, and image quantity wise, for stills, it doesn't disappoint. It's really quite good. Just be careful with bright points of light. And if you're using this on the Sony for video, don't expect the continuous autofocus to be typically Sony.